In the digital corner is Pigments, a three engine monster with knockout effects. <laughs> In the analog corner is the Matrix Brew. It's a three oscillator powerhouse with a crazy punch. All right, all right, let's get serious. All right, let me tell you what this video is not. This is not a video where we debate the merits of analog versus digital and saying one is better. This is simply showing you how, if you wanna make your own drums, you might do it on a VST or you might do it on a hardware synth. So for the digital way, I'm gonna show you how to do it in Arturia's pigments. And for the analog way, I'm gonna show you how to do it with Arturia's Matrix Brute. Now, why would I show you how to do sound design for drums on a $2,300 analog synth? I'm showing it to you because I want you to win it. If you're watching this video in April of 2024, we are currently holding a competition on our Discord and you can win the Matrix Brute. All right, let's get into some sound design. So the first thing is to set the tone. The Matrix Brute has three oscillators with a lot of tonal possibilities. Let's initialize the patch. And so I'm gonna turn the first oscillator down, which is the default, and I'm gonna use oscillator three. Now it's not routed by default, so I'm gonna press this button to route it to filter one. And then I'm gonna select a sine wave. And I'll find our pitch, and then I'm gonna turn the key tracking off so that it plays the same note each time. So we need the knob to do this, but much faster. Despite being all analog, the Matrix Brute has a clever way of allowing you to modulate different parameters. This grid of buttons is called the Mod Matrix. So I can hold this button on the grid and wiggle the knob to let it know I want this to be a destination. Meaning I want to use a signal to tell it to wiggle the knob. The best signal, aka modulator, to make this knob go up and down pretty quickly is an envelope. The Matrix Brute has three of them. I'm going to use the third one. I want this envelope's attack at zero and the stain at zero. For now, I'm gonna match the decay and release and set it pretty low. Now let's turn the modulation up. This is how much the knob is going to move. For the transient, we're gonna use a white noise. I'm gonna send the noise to the second filter and you'll see why in a minute. So I'm going to set the noise volume as a destination by pressing here and wiggling the knob. Then I'm gonna use envelope one to move the knob very quickly up and down, right? That's the modulation. This is going to be much quicker than the kick. And I'm gonna adjust the second filter and make it a high pass filter. And I'm just gonna filter out the low parts of the white noise. What's super useful is to use the resonance to accentuate uh, certain frequencies. And this will change the tone of the transient that you've added to the kick. With three sound generating engines and a whole host of modulation sources, designing drums and pigments is pretty easy. There are several ways to create the tone. You can start with the analog engine or the wavetable engine. I'm gonna use wavetable. I'm gonna leave it on sine wave. I'm gonna take off the key tracking so it plays the same note no matter what key on the keyboard. And I'm gonna find the root tone for the kick. We wanna modulate this knob to go up and down really quickly. Of course there are envelopes and envelopes are really great, but Pigments has function generators, which are super useful. I don't need release, sustain. I just need attack and a sharp decay. So I'm gonna adjust this function generator to make a sharp envelope for our pitch. I'm going to turn it to Hertz so that it doesn't sync to the BPM of the project. It's the same every time. I'll make sure it's one shot, drag it to the course. Already a punchy kick. So you see if you go really high, you get that lasery sound, and I just want a subtle transient. Let's adjust the curve a little bit more. Play around with this to get the results that you want. Now the tone is kind of open, so I'm going to adjust the main envelope, which is the volume for the entire patch. 
I always link the decay and release on the envelopes. That way, no matter if I hold the key down or press it quickly, you get the same tail each time. Now for the transit, we're gonna use the utility engine, which has noise. We're gonna turn on noise one, and uh, you can see what the noise sounds like here, but I'm just gonna use a function generator to create, again, a really sharp transient. Really short, I'm gonna make it a steep declining curve here, uh, and then I'm going to drag the modulation to the volume. And then we'll just adjust to taste. And the great thing about this is you can cycle through the different sounds in the sampler. If you want something dynamic, leave it on random, and that means that it will start at a different point in the file, but key will set it to start exactly at the beginning each time, and it'll give you consistent sound. And now for the sauce, there's a lot of things we could try, but one of the easiest things is to add a sample. And so I'm just gonna go to impacts, which will automatically give us something with a great attack. Like this. You can hear on its own, it's already great, but we're gonna take the volume down and add another uh, modulation to that. So we'll use envelope two. I'll link the decay and release and I'll make it really, really short and then just drag that to the volume of that impact. And so you really just gotta play with the decay here to get the timing right. You might adjust the attack a little bit. And I'm gonna turn off the key tracking so we get the same note every time. And I'm just gonna play with the tuning of the sample. Oh, that's interesting. I'll adjust the modulation amount, make it a little more subtle. And that's pretty good. Uh, another option that we can do to add some saucy transients that aren't white noise is to change the engine to analog. I'm gonna make engine to analog. And I'm gonna turn off the other engine so that we can focus on this for now. And I'm gonna throw up the FM. I'm just gonna throw it all the way up. I get this really metallic transient. So I'm just play with the shapes. Uh, the envelope, I'll adjust the the modulator, which is oscillator three, the overall tuning, and then I'll add in the other engines to see what they sound like in context. And now you might hear something in this metallic sound that kind of sounds like a Now the easiest way to make a hi-hat sound is just to use white noise, but if you want a really dynamic, realistic sound, you want to make a metallic kind of attack transient um, that's very dynamic, that changes with every hit. So we're going to go to the analog oscillator and we're going to throw up the FM just like we did on the kick. Um, it's already got an envelope applied, so I'm just going to play with the shapes. I'm going to adjust the decay and we're looking for just like a metallic tone that sounds like it might be hitting a piece of metal. And now let's go ahead and add in the noise. And I'm gonna put a different envelope on here. I'll use envelope two. Adjust the decay to open it up. This is kind of the splash of the hi-hat. And then you can play around with different sounds in the noise engine, see if anything sounds interesting, but I'm gonna stick with the regular white noise. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna map the velocity to the decay. So depending on how hard I hit the key, it'll give me an open or a closed hi-hat. Uh, here's an example of that. The Matrix Brute doesn't have as many modulation options, but has this one very unique feature that helps us create this metallic tone, and it's this metalizer. So let me turn up the triangle wave, which is what the metalizer is attached to. Let's see what it sounds like when we turn up the metalizer. So this is a combination of wave folding and some other magic. So let me set up the envelope. I'm gonna just put everything down and I actually just wanna attach the volume of the oscillator. So I'm gonna add the oscillator to the mod matrix. I'll find envelope three, and I'm going to bring the modulation amount up, and then I'm gonna adjust the decay a little bit uh, and let a little bit in. I'm messing with the VCA envelope, which controls the volume of the whole patch. 
and I'll just mess with the metalizer and just find a good sound. I'm gonna turn off key tracking on this third oscillator and I'm gonna leave the volume down because I'm not gonna use it for sound, I'm gonna use it to send frequency modulation to the metalizer. So this knob here allows the third oscillator to frequency modulate the other oscillators. To the left will modulate oscillator one and to the right will modulate oscillator two. I'm gonna play with the tuning of that third oscillator and just find a good metallic tone that's the transient and I'll shorten the envelope a bit here. Check out the different ways on oscillator three. It's really amazing the difference one slight movement can make. The key tracking is off on the third oscillator, but you can't turn it off for the main oscillators, so playing different keys are actually going to get you different tones, which can be useful to find the right sound. I'm going to send the noise through filter too. Now let's add the volume for the noise oscillator to the mod matrix, and then I'm gonna use envelope one to adjust this volume. So let's increase the amount and reset the envelope. I'm gonna reset the volume, and I'm just gonna slowly bring up the decay and release. and playing the keys to see if anything sounds better. And now notice that if I make the release higher than decay, I can do open and closed hats depending on if I hold down the key or release it immediately. And different noise types make a world of difference. Blue actually sounds really good for hi-hats. And now I'm going to change the second filter to a high pass filter and just roll off the low end, crank up the resonance. There you go. Now for the snare, I'm going to use a wavetable engine, but I'm actually not going to use the wavetable. I'm going to use the modulator here. So if I turn the volume of the wavetable down, I can turn the modulator up here and treat it like an oscillator. The advantage here is I can change the tuning to Hertz, which will allow me to set a specific frequency and ignore key tracking. It'll always play the same note. So if I want a deep snare, I might set this in the lower range of 110 to 120, and we'll get into the 200 range for a standard snare sound. Just like the kick, I'm going to use the function generator as an envelope again and adjust the curve. And I'll change the trigger to one shot so that it only fires when I hit a key. I'll change it to Hertz to keep the envelope time fixed. Now let's assign it to the modulator and adjust. The tone is holding a little too long, so now I'm going to use envelope 3 to control the overall volume of this oscillator. So the function generator is in envelope mode controlling the pitch, and envelope 3 is controlling the volume. Let's start off basic and add some noise to our tone. I'm going to use envelope 2 for the noise and have a little more control over decay and release. Now you can play with the range of the modulator we're using as an oscillator. Lower tones make deeper snares, higher tones will get you into future based territory. And for the sauce, you guessed it, samples. So 
So I'm going to send function generator 2 to the volume of this sample. So we're going to adjust this function generator to be an envelope. I'll make it a one shot, change it to Hertz and give it a pretty steep curve. I'm going to increase the time so that happens faster. Adjust the modulation amount. And then I'll just play with the start time in the file and try and find an interesting place. Let's turn off the other engines to focus. I'm not getting much of the sample here, so. Let's shuffle through some samples, see what else we get. I'm going to turn off key tracking, maybe mess with the pitch a little bit more. Now I'm just going to do some tweaking, fine tune things. All right, so I did a lot of tweaking and here's where I ended up. You can pause here and copy the settings. I adjusted the sample to this Harmonium Palace, which sounds awesome. Now something crucial that makes pigments really special is the filter routing. So what I ended up doing was routing the noise to filter two and changing the filter structure. So filter one uh, and filter two are now processed parallel. They go separate instead of filter one going into filter two. And I just pulled a little bit of the low end off from the noise here. And now it's time to add some processing. You're gonna wanna add compression, a little bit of space, and if you want something gritty, some extra saturation. On the Matrix Brute, we have a few options for our tone. You could use any of the oscillators, but the first two operate a little bit differently than the third one, and I'll show you the difference. I'm gonna use the sub oscillator on oscillator one to get a pure sine wave, and I'm gonna find a good starting pitch for our snare. I'll add the coarse knob for the oscillator to the mod matrix. Then I'll send modulation from envelope one to this coarse knob. Let's turn it up. I'll reset the envelope and just start with decay. I need to open up the main envelope a bit because the release is all the way down, so the snare is getting clamped. So I can't have the release longer on the mod than on the main envelope, which controls the volume of the whole patch. The Matrix Brute is an analog synth, but it uses digital control, so sometimes you have to wiggle the knobs and sliders to get them to reset. Now to get more control over the tonal element, I'm going to add the sub volume to the mod matrix and I'll turn the volume all the way down and then I'm going to apply envelope three to the volume. So I'll select that in the matrix and I'll reset the envelope, turn it up and then I'll slowly bring the decay so that we get just a little snap, a little thwomp. Now, since we're on the main oscillators here, we have pitch tracking, but if we want to not have pitch tracking and have every key the same, we can use oscillator three. So I'll change it to a sine wave. I'll just set the tune in the middle, and then I'm going to replace the coarse tuning for oscillator one in the mod matrix with the coarse tuning for oscillator three. And then let's add the volume of oscillator three to the mod matrix in the same place and that'll replace oscillator one's volume. And so these envelopes are already routed, so I just have to make a few adjustments.
but let's add the noise in and I'm gonna send it to the second filter and I'm just gonna adjust the main envelope because the tail of the white noise is the last thing I don't need to add anything else so uh, let's adjust the release and I'll make the release higher than decay which means I can play more muted if I hold it down and if I let it go quickly it's more open I'm going to change the noise type to blue noise. And now we're going to do something that will thicken up the snare. Uh, it'll help with the transient and it'll also give it more body. I'm going to bring the volume of oscillator 1 back in and I'm going to add some of the triangle wave and bring in the metalizer. And now I'm going to add the volume of oscillator 1 to the mod matrix. I'm just going to reuse the envelope to match the volume of oscillator 1. I'm just going to add some frequency modulation from oscillator 3 to oscillator 1. And of course, if you really want to add some crazy sauce, just play with the effects. Turn the regeneration up high and the delay low, and do this with the flanger delay or chorus to get really wacky processing. Let's create a few percussion sounds. I'll start with a clap. Snares and kicks have a decaying noise and tone with a short transient on top, but a clap is basically three transients in quick succession. What we need for this are several quick spikes from a modulator. The function generator is perfect for this. I'll right click and erase, change the drawing mode to steps, and I'll add three steps with a space in between each. And I'm just gonna make them spikes. I'm gonna delete all these extra points and turn them into spikes and I'll assign the function generator to the volume of the noise generator. Now I'm going to change the rate to Hertz. Now watch what happens as I slowly up the rate of the function generator. You can also mess with the tuning of the sample. You can play with different samples, which will give you wildly different results. I found this sample earlier that works really well. Now, I'm going to change the filter here that it's routed to to a high pass. And I'm just going to make sure not too much low end gets through and adjust the resonance, which can change the tone of the clap depending on where you have the cutoff. And I'm going to change the phase to key so that I get the same sound every time I hit the key. Again, random will play a different part of the waveform when I hit a key. Okay, here's where I ended up. I have the bit crushed insects on utility and I added this noise carrier to the second engine. I added the same function generator to the noise carrier sample in engine 2. And then I add a little bit of compression with a multiband. And this super unison is helpful as it will create more copies of the clap. And you can just adjust the detune and the different parameters to taste. For the classic electronic cowbell from old school drum machines, remember these numbers, seven, nine, six. We're gonna select the analog engine and change them all to square waves. Now I'll adjust the course of my first one. I'll just throw it up 10. This isn't super important, but usually it helps to have it higher. And I'm going to make the second one seven steps higher. So that's seven semitones, seven steps higher from the first oscillator. And then I'm going to make the third one nine steps higher, nine semitones higher than the second oscillator. Okay, and now for the fourth oscillator, we're going to switch to engine two. Make sure that's on square wave. I'm going to turn off the key tracking. And I'm going to make that one six higher than the third oscillator in engine one.
Now, this doesn't quite sound like a cowbell until we adjust the volume. And I'm just gonna use the main envelope because I'm not gonna do anything else. I'll link the decay and release. And now it's kind of tough to control the tuning of all of these now that they're tuned in different ways. So I'm gonna use a macro, which is a way to control several parameters at once. I'm gonna drive the macro to the coarse tuning on engine one and the coarse tuning on engine two. So now I can set the pitch. Another extra step you could do is create a pitch envelope for the cowbell if you want a little bit more attack. Of course, function generator, again, it's perfect for this. We'll just create a really steep, sharp envelope, just like we did for most of our drums. We'll make sure there's a pretty steep decline. We'll change it to Hertz. And we'll apply that to the pitch of both engines. Now we need these to match. So if I go into the sign window, I can see the numbers for both and quickly make them match. A little too much, so we'll adjust the speed. See what it sounds like without. Just really subtle extra attack. Okay, here's another super unique feature on the Matrix Brute that makes basic claps possible, and that's the custom wave LFO. We're gonna start with white noise and try to get those three transients we need for a clap. So to get to the custom wave LFO, click these two buttons on either LFO at the same time. You'll get this shape. And I'm just gonna level this out for now, but this is the shape of the LFO. You see there are some buttons lit blue and some red. We're gonna make them all blue because this decides if the steps are smooth from one to the next or sharp and discreet. And we want sharp steps, which is what blue is. And now all we have to do is set the three spikes just like we did in pigment. So three quick transients with spaces in between, and that's what we're gonna send to the noise. So let's go to the mod matrix and let me add the noise volume to the mod matrix. And now I'm gonna find LFO1, which is what we made that custom three spike transient modulation on. And I'm gonna turn it all the way up and I'm gonna change it to single trigger. So it just triggers when I press the key and doesn't loop. And then watch what happens when I turn the rate up. And up in the high range is where we get our clap. Great. Now we're pretty limited when it comes to claps on an analog synth, but there's a couple other things we can do. I'm going to add a little tonal transient to help define this clap, and I'm going to use oscillator 3. I'll change it to a sine wave. And I'm going to add the volume of oscillator 3 to the matrix. And then I'm going to reset envelope 3 because that's the envelope I'm going to send to the volume. Okay, now I raise the decay, and I, I just want a little pop. We want to adjust the tuning. Sometimes the lower pitch sounds good. Sometimes the higher one really blends in better. And then a cool trick is if you delay the envelope, instead of a transit, you can fill out the clap a little bit more. So that's without, and that's with. The key tracking's still on, we can turn that off. And just find something that blends. And the same way that we did with pigments, we can try and use an effect to create copies of our clap. So I'll try using the chorus with just a little bit of a delay and playing with lower to middle regeneration. I took the stereo down and adjusted the delay time just to find something that sounds interesting but natural. And I'll change the noise type to blue. Not too bad. All right, so we're gonna make a cowbell on the Matrix Brute. We have only three oscillators, but that'll get us close enough. So again, remember the numbers are seven, nine, six, so we only have to remember seven and nine. We're gonna change everything to square waves and we're gonna send everything to filter one. And I'm just gonna pitch it up some to start. It's just a random note I picked. There's no science to this part. I'll up the release on the main envelope and I'm gonna bring an oscillator to same filter, I'll bring that one up. First, I'm gonna match them. I need to find the match, and that phasing is how you know that they're matching. And then I'm going to count the steps from the match. Okay, so match, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, 
Now I'm going to add oscillator 3 and I'll make it a square wave. And I'm going to turn down oscillator 1 so I can hear better when I have to match the pitch. So, get them matched. And then we're going to raise this one 9. So, match. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, so cool. Now, how do we control the volume of all these oscillators? So we can map one destination to all three, but since all three oscillators are going to the Steiner filter, and the Steiner filter has a volume control, we'll use that as a destination. So I'm going to add the volume of the Steiner filter in the matrix, and I'm going to reset the envelope, and I'll map envelope three to the Steiner filter volume. And I'll just throw up the decay and release to match. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? Great. And then I could use the release trick again where on my main envelope where the release is longer than the decay. So we can have like a muted cowbell in the open one. Okay, so drum samples on their own are fine, but the most important thing is what they sound like in context. So now let's hear some examples of the sounds made with pigments and the Matrix Brute with analog lab play and some vocal samples here and there from Splice. Mm -hmm. 